Continuous lights versus strobe lights. Hi, I'm Joel Grimes with the Joel Grimes Academy, where I set out to encourage you to uh, be an artist, to live your dream, and to create an income with your camera. And so I cover all sorts of topics. Here we're gonna talk about uh, looking at the difference between continuous light source versus strobe light source when doing a portrait indoors. Now, I get, you know, I kind of had a little bit of a curiosity about this, and of course I'm a strobe guy, so um, now that we got video, we're seeing more uh, strobe or continuous light, sorry, continuous light options on the market, and so this last weekend I was shooting a project with Russell Brown from Adobe. He had a continuous light set up, and we were kind of mis going back and forth between my strobes and his continuous light. And while we did that, I thought, you know what? Why don't I shoot both as close as I can because, you know, we had to move things around. We had our subject sitting there. Um, why don't I shoot um, a, a continuous light image as, uh, a, uh, and get the exposure the way I want, the best I can, and then do my strobe the way I do it. Look at the two and see the difference between the two. So. Um, I did that, and let me come in here and show you. So I'm going to come down on this one. This is the strobed one. Let's move this up here, and um, we well, can see the whole thing. It's not 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 a, a great shot. We got some pretty amazing shots. Um, let's go over here, and this one bring it down to match. Okay, we got that one and that one. So. You can see, so that's a continuous light, there's the strobe. And the only thing I've done on here is I brought it into to, uh, bridge and I just tweaked the exposures a little bit to match as best I can. And I think what I did also is I took and warmed up just like, you know, 200 Kelvin or whatever. I warmed up my strobe just to kind of give me a close, a little bit closer match. I think usually strobes tend to be pure, uh, pretty clean daylight balanced. I don't know what that is, 5,500 Kelvin, somewhere around there. And then the, hot, the continuous light was maybe just a tad warmer. And there's a lot of variables in there. But anyways, that's the only real adjustments I made. So here we have uh, these two. Now, let me show you what um, Russell was using for his continuous light. It's an Aperture uh, a Light Storm, and it was pretty bright. I mean, at least in this environment we were in, when you had the lights down, you put that uh, modifier, turn it on, it seemed pretty bright. And we were doing some video behind the scenes too, so it actually worked out pretty good. Um, and then the modifier that he used was the, the Aperture Light Dome, which is about uh, 40 inches, which is probably, what, four feet, somewhere around there, three and a half feet, something like that. So my modifier that I used was a, um, was a five-foot octo from Westcott, in, and I had a, a Godox AD600 in, as my strobe. And, and so my modifier was a little bit bigger. So right away that'll tell you if you follow the joel grimes academy or you'll hear me talking about strobes i've been doing this for 10 years now the bigger the source in relationship to the softer the light so my source was just a little bigger so that's automatically going to give me a little softer light and you can see that uh here and we also I, it wasn't like i matched it perfectly in the exact same spot i kind of swung it over and just kind of moved in position um, but that's not so much what I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about. What I want to show you is why you might uh, second guess your choice of using a continuous light versus strobe. So let me zoom in 100% on, oops, that's 200%, 100% on the strobe. And I want you to notice how clean the shadows are. Everything's super, super crisp, super, super clean. Okay, so let's go over to the continuous light. And we're at 100%. I'm going to show you. Um, this was shot at 1 uh, 25th of a second. It was uh, 5.6 aperture. And it was 1600 ISO. And you'll see there's, there's, there's kind of a grungy, gritty, noisish look in the shadows. In, or in the blacks. Anything that's got black. Oh, hold on a second. Uh, that was my demo there I want to show you there it is I'm going to show you how I clean that up that's why I have let's get rid of that layer I have two layers here so look here how noisy the blacks are 
And this is before I clean it up. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Look at the strobes, clean, blacks, continuous light, you get noise. Now that's pretty understandable, 1600 ISO. Now, um, the cameras are amazing today, but you just know as a general rule, the more you go up in your ISO, the greater noise you're gonna get. So, that's one issue. The second issue is, um, and not so much on this image, but I shot quite a few images, and I noticed that if he moved a little bit, even at 125th, it's not as razor sharp as when I use my strobe, and I'll tell you why. Because my strobe was only at 1 200th of a second. The shutter speed was at 1 200th of a second. 7.1 ISO 125, close to 100. But my flash duration is gonna be around 1 3,000th of a second at that output. So on a strobe, the, the more power you put out, generally, not all strobes, but the ones that I've been using, the more power you put out, the lower the flash duration is. And I wasn't at full power, so I was probably at a quarter power. Quarter power in a Godox 8600 is probably around uh, one three thousandth of a second. So right away, that's gonna tell you that when you use a strobe, you get a sharper, or uh, uh, you, you, you will freeze the action better than you will obviously with continuous light. So that's the biggest problem. So obviously my subject's sitting, he's pretty stagnant, but if my subject did this, it's gonna be blurred hands, blurred. And I've, I've got some samples of that in one of my workshops. We did a thing where I shot around 100, 125th of a second, and you think that's gonna freeze your, your, your subject, it's not. Not if they're doing this. So you gotta be very careful when it comes to that. So let's, let's back up and I'm gonna show you how to, I can take uh, rid of that, a little bit of that, uh, that uh, noise. And I did this in um, Photoshop here. So let's get rid of this layer and I'm gonna show you. So Command J will give me a, a blank layer. We'll go up to uh, Filter, uh, Camera Raw Filter. We're gonna go right over to the uh, details and we're gonna bring our noise. Let's go to 100% on this. Make sure you can see what I'm doing. Zoom, zoom in here. So there's the noise. We go about 35, somewhere around that. It cleans up the noise. Uh, you can play around these sliders, but and then you might add just a tad of sharpness there. But still, you got a little bit of noise, but not too bad. I think it's acceptable. So if I had a client, and uh, even something I would do, I wouldn't mind uh, handing this off. It would be acceptable. So here it is with the noise reduction and without. So you, hopefully you can see that. It's a video capture and all this. I'm, I'm not sure. On my monitor, I can see a pretty drastic change there. So let's sum it up. The advantages of a strobe is you freeze action. You get um, cleaner blacks, cleaner, and there's no noise. And one other benefit is I can always take strobes outdoors uh, to overpower the sun. Can't do that with hot lights or continuous lights. All right, so the advantages of a continuous light come down to really two main things. Uh, the ability to uh, shape your light, see it in real time. And that is actually kind of fun to work in that. And I was having fun doing that, just in, in moving my, my modifier around until I got the light where I want it. Um, you can also uh, shoot, if you're doing video content, you can shoot some video, you can shoot some stills, and there's, it, it's just like seamless. So I would say that's the biggest two advantages of continuous light. The cost, about the same, because I think our, it depends on what light you're gonna get, but this light was about 750 bucks, the modifier is about the same as what a strobe versus a modifier would cost. But here's what I would say, let's sum it up with this. You have to figure out what works best for you. Now, personally, I am a strobe guy. I still feel more comfortable using strobes. I like the idea that I don't have to worry about it having the movement or you know the risk of having a little bit of a soft uh, subject when they move. And I don't really like the noise. Um, I don't want to have to work about taking it out later. I love that crispness that that strobe gives me. And so that's my that's where I'm comfortable. But again, if you're shooting some uh, video and mixing back and forth, you can make continuous light work. I guess that's the moment, what I took away from this. And in the end, you're an artist. 
It doesn't matter what the tools you use. Do you get to where you want to go? And do you have a client that's happy at the end and pays you? That's what it's all about. So with that, hopefully you learned a little bit. And I would encourage you to take, if like me, take an idea, take a comparison, go out and test it. Test it yourself. I love doing these things where I maybe I learned something that will allow me to go on and, and uh, you know change my mind a little bit. So um, go out, practice, have fun, create content, and in the end, I want you to uh, create an income with your, with your camera. Well, thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that little bell so you can always be caught up on my latest content.